Hello. Hi, everyone. I am here to share something that is extremely important, and I believe the Lord has directed me to share. So I'm going to pray first before I do this. Uh, Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are God and you reign forevermore. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, the kingdoms of this world is be are, the, are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Father, we thank you that you are God and there is no other God beside you. So we, we surrender, we bow to your will, and we applaud you, we honor you, and we give you glory because your name will be glorified. Because, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by you. Thank you, Father, for your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I am uh, under authority, that of my husband, Andre, my pastor, Raymond Grant, and my king, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to uh, update you on something the Lord had given me two years ago. On April 3rd, 2021, the Lord gave me what I believe to be a prophetic dream. And in the dream, I saw the word nine. It was written in all caps, and it was writ written within a kind of a frame that uh, it, it looks like a, a, a coat of arms, but not really. Very difficult to describe what it looks like, but I learned after, and this is what the Holy Spirit told me, that it was a message board. And what was on it was, like I said, the word nine in all caps. And I was made to understand that the tribulation, the Lord was saying, will begin in nine years. That was in 2021. We are now in 2023. And the Lord just wants us to understand that we have seven years left. All right. And uh, it is not uh, something idle. It is not something that is uh, to be taken lightly. Uh, two weeks after, I did uh, an audio, and I sent it out to my family and some friends. Two weeks later, a family member sent me a video by uh, a, a prophet called Tommy Ayorami. I can't say his name really well, Ayorami. I think that's what it is. And it was the same word. He said, tell them they have nine years left. And so I was very happy to see it and to understand that, well, I was not alone, even though I did understand that it was the word of the Lord and I, I knew. So I'm here to update us and to have us remind us, whoever didn't watch the video, you don't know, but when I put a video out regarding it, I had mentioned that in this dream, the Lord had given a very specific instruction. He said, we are to pray for each other by laying our hands on each other. And uh, I was also instructed to share it with my pastor in Ottawa, which I did. And he received it as the word of the Lord. And I was also to speak with the coordinator for the prayer ministry there, which I did. And uh, this servant of the Lord also received the continuum of the word and received a very specific scripture that we are to pray over our families, over each other. And it is First Thessalonians chapter 4, chapter 5, I'm sorry, verse 23. And it says, And the very God of peace sanctify your holy I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this word she received and the Lord instructed that we are to use this word specifically when we pray over each other. It is very, very important that we pray over each other. It cannot do any harm. It must do good. And this is the instruction that the Lord gave. So we would do well to honor his word by our uh, obedience. Okay, so she received this word, and you know, sometimes when the Lord gives a word to someone, uh, he will give someone else the continuum of that word, because the Bible says we know in part and we prophesy in part. Nobody sees the whole picture, right? And so um, just here to update and to remind you to pay attention. Let us pray over each other. Pray for your children. Pray for your spouses. Pray over your elderly parents. Pray. 
just pray the word of the Lord that the Lord has given in preparation for a future that is going to be very challenging. And as I say this, I also uh, will include something I received from the Lord a few months before that word. I believe it was October or November 2020. And uh, I was just up in the morning waiting on the Lord and he began to speak. And this is the first thing he said. He said, the beast will rise from the sea. I checked that and I looked and it was in um, Revelation chapter 13. Second thing he said, persecution is coming. And then I saw quickly a visual that would uh, seem to indicate that the persecution would be uh, predominantly, um, uh, there is a, a group of um, an organization, I'll call it, an organization that will figure very prominently in the persecution of the church. I saw that just in a flash. And uh, the next thing he said was, love will clothe us. And then after that, he said, many of your luxuries will slip away. And so after I heard those things, I said, because I was communicating with the Lord, so I said, you will protect us. You will hide us. And I kind of got out of that. That was all he said. So I'm here to encourage us to begin to seek the Lord. I mean, it, it is easy to listen to someone and to be skeptical. It is easy also to listen and to obey if you're disposed, you know, inclined that way. But the fact is, we don't really know unless we check in with the Lord and find out what he is saying to us. And that is extremely, extremely vital at this time. I would encourage you, begin to pray, Set, establish a platform of prayer. And when I say that, I'm saying like an hour a day, you know, or maybe two or more, whatever you can do. I know people that pray, you know, six, seven, eight, nine hours. Uh, because sometimes some people can't do that, but some can, okay? So uh, establish a platform of prayer. Begin to fast. Begin to seek the Lord, but do not forget what he said. He said we are to lay hands on each other, and we are to pray the word in Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly. Pray it over your children. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that the word I said first about the nine years, I was not talking about the coming of the Lord. So nobody say, oh, Philip, I said the Lord is coming in seven years. I did not say that. Okay, I talked about the tribulation and it is coming. So like I said just now, check in with the Lord, begin to pray earnestly, seek the Lord. You know, like in the days of Noah, People were just continuing doing what they were doing. And the Bible says they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. And I thought, how could they not know? Because Noah was preaching for so many years. But the Bible says they knew not. So at some point, they, they didn't care. And so they just stopped, uh, you know, paying attention to Noah, maybe. And it was totally unaware when the flood came. Now, it is possible uh, to... Um, be in the church and be righteous. And I just heard a word from my cousin Caleb preached a, a little clip uh, from Deeper and he, and he was talking about Lot. And he said, imagine nobody knew what was going to happen in Sodom. And not even Lot knew. And Lot was a righteous man. That's what the Bible says. The only one who knew was Abraham. And he said that's because Abraham was in the place of friendship and intimacy with God. All right, and so he could pray and intercede, and then the angels were able to go and rescue Lot and his family. So he said it is possible to be in church, be a righteous person, and be completely unaware of what is coming. We do not want to be unaware. The Lord wants us to know. Information is available. Pray. Seek the Lord. Search the scriptures. Find out what the Bible says about the end time. I'll leave you with that. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you.